right, welcome. Uh, today we are going to have a look. It's a, really a great opportunity for me personally. I'm, I'm glad to be able to do this and I'm glad to be uh, having an opportunity to bring you along. JB's uh, mechanic has uh, put a Lincoln V12 engine on an engine stand. They have a stand that they put together for testing these uh, old Lincoln engines. And we're gonna have, uh, uh, it's gonna be probably a few, uh, it's gonna take some time, so I imagine this video is gonna come together in little pieces, but part of it is uh, putting the uh, electrical, the, the coil and uh, two dual distributor system together. So electrically, uh, this old engine needs uh, new wiring. So we're gonna have a look at the wiring and then hopefully uh, get all the pieces together to start this thing up. It's an engine that has an unknown background. Uh, JB acquired it kind of as a complete engine. So he's having his guy kind of go through and test it out. First of all, make sure uh, it runs and all. And, and we're gonna, my understanding is he's already been doing the uh, the oiling and uh, slow turning by hand and make sure there's no broken rings and take the pan off and clean it. All those uh, good preparation things before you start an engine because you definitely don't want to damage the engine uh, starting it just kind of out of nowhere. So uh, rest assured, some of you might be going, oh no, don't, don't, don't. Yeah, he's, he's taking the heads off. He's taking the oil pan off. Uh, he's been uh, pre-lubing and all that, so uh, I don't want you to think this is just kind of a reckless engine start. It's not that, but uh, we're at the point of the process where JB called me and said, "Hey, look, let's uh, we're ready to get this thing to actually fire up," and that's what I'm going to bring you to now. I'm going to throw this in the uh, playlist for both the two Lincoln projects. However, this engine is not associated specifically for either one of the projects. The uh, 1938 Zephyr, of course, is having a an engine built from the ground up, and we've already posted some videos on that process. So that is one engine. The 1939 Zephyr that's uh, getting uh, work done uh, had a good running engine in it, and it had. there's no need that we're aware of for changing anything as far as the actual internals of that engine. It seems to be running great, no smoking, etc. So this engine is not specifically uh, attached to either one of those. So I just wanted to let you know that. Here we go. Okay, so we are looking at the ignition coil side of this V12. That's great. And okay, so there's a housing here. Right. And oh, remember you got two distributors because you've got 12 cylinders so you got you need you can't do all 12 off of one so at least they couldn't back in this day well it's, it's it didn't make sense so you've got you set up two distributors that That's have correct. to be signed each one has six each they each have six and then those those go inside of here you can see inside of it okay all right you can see how it relates to the so is that kind of like a cam that spins? That, Correct. Okay. Yep. And so as the cam spins, it connects to these right. different exactly. electrical points. It fires one of the 12 cylinders. So you got six on wow. one side, six on the other. Well, I mean, and if these, these things had to be rebuilt exactly correct. Uh, and then you still have to time them once you get the engine running. So this is a distributor, but these aren't the coil. The, where's the coils for these things? This is the coil right here. This oh, there is the coil. Top. Okay, that's on top. It's part of the assembly. Right, and they, as long as these are not leaking, the internal mechanism is probably fine. You know, you're looking for cracks. Okay. Um, if it's leaked out, of course, it's, it's no good. But these will last in, almost indefinitely. You just clean up these contacts. All right. Make sure that they're in good order. That's the way it relates. And of course, these points need to be in, in good shape. Right. Okay. Right. And flat. Yeah. And, and be able to compress and come back out. Now this one right. seems kind of draggy. Okay. Oh yeah. But I that see. one. That's what sits on top of that and rides in these two okay, spools. Okay. Yeah. So those are the electrical contacts here exactly. that ride on the wall. And that sends a message to the 12 cylinders via this. Well, I can tell by how that's built. Mm -hmm. You've got, you've got, um, 
these are electrical contacts and Correct. so are these. Correct. So they match up with these right. electrical contacts right. and these. So one's coming in, getting coiled up, juiced up, and then going out, and right. then it gets rotated to the distributor. Exactly. I see. People very have tried to circumvent this system. Very difficult. <laughs> Not easy to get around Not this, easy. huh? As long as this is rebuilt by somebody who knows what they're doing, yeah. and that coil is in good order, it'll work. You know, you've got, you still got to time it, obviously. And right. you got to know the firing order. And these right. wires are all fed through this protective cover, and so it makes it pretty interesting to be able to weave all of this through right. and these covers. Track of... A lot of guys just say, to heck with it. Right. But, Boy, it sure um, keeps it neat looking. Yeah, though. it's very, very polished looking, and uh, right. as long as you do it properly. They don't That's necessarily really cool. crossfire like you might imagine because they're real close to, together. Yeah, and they're all insulated. Right. And you just use brand new wires. Huh. Right here in the back. If, if you hold it and you look at it from this side, you'll okay. have the firing order correct you know, uh, position. Oh, it's written on the yeah. cap itself? But if it's, the number's upside down, that means it's on the other side rotation. So really? you look at this side and it's right. You look at that side and you can read it. Really? Yeah. So it's just, it's really cool the way they did that. Huh. It's almost foolproof. Well, let's not get too carried away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am standing right next to you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's interesting. I got to put a gasket on there, but you know, why, yeah. b why bother if you want to be oh, We're all testing apart? right now. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's got to come all over. You know, all this stuff's gonna come off again. Okay, so you were telling me earlier, Tracy, that these um, spark plugs, other than just kind of nice, nicely yeah. finger tight. Yeah, usually I just put them in finger tight like that. There, so right when there. you're okay, right? So when you're bench testing something, can you explain why you would do that? What, what's the purpose of not, not, uh, not they're cranking them the down? They're the compression ring on the spark plug. So these spark plugs, see that? this is new to me. Spark plugs, these are actually compression washers and they're designed to compress a little bit as you tighten them down to, so they have a really good seal, mm -hmm. but that only works the first time you do it. Yeah. Technically, yeah. I mean, so you're really preserving that, that proper crush down for later when you're just testing it. Definitely. Yeah, gotcha. All right, now what do you need to to bench fire a an engine, what what's involved? Oh, just loosening it up. If it's an old one, like this. Okay, so what did you do? This had been sitting for WD, an unknown amount of time. Yeah, WD-40 and uh, transmission fluid in the cylinder. Transmission fluid, WD-40. Yeah, okay. Wash it out. Wash out the pan, of course, and uh, let it sit for a while. Break it loose. Make sure we didn't break a ring. Okay, so you let it sit. Do you hand? Did you hand crank it? Yes. First. Okay. Back so first forth, you hand first. crank it with all that lubrication in there. Right. Make sure it's moving freely. And then yeah, pulls the tops of the head, uh, heads off. Okay, so you make sure the pistons were nice and loose. Heads were off. Yeah. Pistons were moving, and you took you said you put the took the pan off, make sure that was clean and everything was yeah. good. Okay. And uh, when it changed the oil pump, you did put, change the oil pump. Yeah, put a high volume oil pump on it. Okay. And uh, basically, and that's it. Head gaskets and. All right, and then from there, you obviously need the spark plug, spark plug wires. The coil has to work. Yep. Uh, so you need to energize the coil with the battery. With the battery. Typical, just jumper wiring. Yep. And you just two uh, wires going to the coil. Okay. And they're finger tight. <laughs> they're also finger tight. <laughs> yeah, because again, it's just going to sit right here on the bench. Yeah, we, we got a new starter, but that didn't work, so I went ahead and rebuilt one of the old ones. <laughs> okay. And the old starter just worked fine, huh? Yeah. Cool. And this thing uh, it fires right up, obviously. Uh, wait a second, is this, this is an oil filter back yeah. here? Put an oil filter and uh, no so, water, but we put oil on it. Yeah, so it's got the oil. Now, what's the what happens on an original Zephyr? Does it have an oil filter? Yeah, it has a, a canister filter up there, like. Okay. Uh, the screen right for the board. bench situation, you want to make sure you're catching any debris that might have gotten in the engine. Yeah. You want to catch it. Or, the, or from the shop. Yeah, right. Debris from anywhere. Yeah. Gotcha. Very cool. Using the fuel system. <laughs> yeah, from wherever. Undisclosed, undisclosed location. Yeah. 
So that what's the next step? Are you, you're going to put uh, a pulleys on it, fill it up with water, and run the water pump? Yeah, and get it to run and uh, keep it running. Okay. And that's it. If it runs 15 minutes, okay. So idle. I'm going to check back with you later when you have what you need to do that. Yeah. And, and then we'll see. If we can actually watch it run for a while instead of just a second. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes at least. Then you know it's going to. Okay. Know, operating temperature, and they got nothing really wrong with it. All right. Now, Tracy, tell me. Uh, if, now I know I was with JB when he picked this engine up. There was very little information about whether it would run, uh, how long it had sat. I mean, we didn't really know much about it. And he gave it to you to check over. Can you tell me some of the things that you normally look for? Oh, right away. When you when you just first see an engine, you don't know anything about it. What do you see? What do you look for? I look in the, in the exhaust ports, uh, spark plugs, look okay. for any uh, richness or. So in the exhaust ports, you're looking for just a lot of dark carbon, yeah. like real heavy carbonization. Heavy, heavy oil burning, uh, too much fuel in one cylinder, or like a white valve on exhaust to make sure you know, it hasn't beamed out and burned. Okay, so you want the valves to all look even. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, then what do you look for on the uh, spark plugs? Oh, just a, a same color as long as it isn't one white to the null rest black. Okay, what does a white spark plug represent? Burned up. That the, probably has a hole in the cylinder or crack in the pig, you know, the block or something. Okay, something's, uh, something, something's wrong. wrong. Okay. Yeah. Um, you look around the heads, see if there's any really bad leaks. In the okay, so the perimeter of the heads yeah. for a gasket leak? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the water water jackets down here on the we haven't even taken these pumps off. Okay. But they spun, you know, and I'll probably just leave them, oil them up and leave them, you know, see how Okay. Alright. Wait a second, this is an oiler for... Yes, this is, that's the oil for the bearing. That is wild. Now, is this something an owner was supposed to service to oil mm -hmm. the bearing oh, of yes. the water pump? Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. And a lot of them have generator on the generators that they've got a little tiny hole that you oil up too. No yeah. kidding. See, I'm learning. Yeah, that is new to me. All about. It makes, I mean, now that I think about it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did not know that. That's very cool. Thanks, Tracy. You're living and learning here. Okay, so these wires look pretty good. Yeah. Oh. They're soldered. On a V12, they're all soldered. You solder. Them, you solder them, okay, so these are new wires that you put together. So you, you just use stock wiring and you just create each one individually to yeah. fit? Yeah. They have to go down your mask real nice. What's so tube. cool is how they all feed into these tubes and they cross over to the right cylinder and go to the oil. Yeah, they look real good when they come out. They, you know. Oh man, that's beautiful. Oh yeah. They usually should, shouldn't cross over too much, you know. It uh, usually fairly easy. Yeah. Well, it. if you're gonna test fire an engine, it may as well be wired right, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That's very cool. Going through all this rigmarole, they break off in here, they break off there, and they, you know, they have shorts. Okay. So you don't need. To so actually, the running way. these wires through, you need to be really careful. Yeah. Now, I would imagine it'd be hard to run them all through these tubes if they have the ends on them. Like, yeah, I it's probably the ends on afterwards. Yeah, you run all the wiring first, then solder on the ends. Okay, that makes sense. Never had thought about that before either. So I guess if you're going to change one wire, you may as well just change them all on one of these. Yep, one by one. Huh. That'd be no fun to feed them through just one. <laughs> you want to do them all. Okay, this must be gasoline in here. Gasoline, we have a filter. We have a, an electric gas pump. We have a regulator. And we have a tube to a single barrel carburetor. That looks great. Now, going to the electrical system. We have a battery. We have a battery connected to a coil. Boy, those, those cables are nicely dressed out. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a starter relay. And so we have spark plugs and coils, so that's good. Lastly, we have a 
Zephyr radiator with two ins and two outs on this radiator. And we are going to test two water pumps and the flow and see how this goes. Spark plugs are there, carburetor is there, alternator, or I should say generator, I guess. And uh, looks like a pretty beefy starter for this thing. And we have a we have the optional exhaust system delete package. <laughs> so we might be getting close to fire this baby up. What happens? Can we oh, fire yeah. it up? It should be flooded, but we'll let's fire. see what happens. Okay. All right. buddies would say what could have possibly gone wrong well, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna up these lines. okay this is a flathead v12 startup and again we have uh let's see how we're doing here we got battery we got a starter solenoid we got an electric fuel pump we have gasoline and a filter we have a fuel regulator we have two water pumps we have a dual coil. We have a single barrel carburetor. We are, and we even have a, a nice Napa Gold uh, oil filter at the back there, just for good measure. All right, 